This video is brought to you by UEI Test Instruments. Essential Instruments, Outstanding Service. It is Thursday morning, October the 7th, I believe. We're back in our package unit. You can see I've already got the micro channel coil taken off of it. And you can see this man's beautiful work of a nice used Bristol compressor. You can tell that that compressor is in no way, shape, or form close to a 2011 year model. I have a brand new Copeland Resip in the uh, back of the truck. I know the other day I said I was going to put a Copeland scroll in here. I just assumed that this unit came from the factory with a scroll, but the York store actually said it came from the factory with a Resip. So they gave me a Copeland Resip compressor, 42,000 BTU. This is a four ton. So they gave me a Copeland CR, and that C is in Charlie, CR42 compressor. So now he didn't even bolt it down. Um, I'm going to unhook this one and see how close the piping is. But yeah, this is, uh, let me tell you what, man, whoever did this job, he deserves an award. All righty. <coughs> Excuse me. I have the new compressor welded in. I actually was able to reuse all his piping he had done. The only problem is, is bolting it. My compressor came with the rubber and the studs and it didn't come with bolts and the old bolts are nowhere to be found, but I have it lined up to bolt. I would just have to move it just a hair. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about bolting it down, but I have my solder joints done. Uh, Copeland sent me that 90 and then this one, I didn't have to do anything. It just went right in to the hot gas, which goes to the coil that I'll have to bend that around a little bit, which is fine. Um, so this should be much better than what he had. This is definitely a POE compressor. Uh, the supplier said it's not really dedicated for 410 or anything else. He said I could run 407 C or 410 in it, but being that this is a 410 labeled unit, I'm going to go ahead and run 410 a in it. Uh, they did say that the pressure, it is made to handle 410 a pressure. So being that this unit is labeled 410A, I'm going to put 410A in it. So now what I'm going to do is, is get that dryer replaced, um, then bend this around and get my coil back on, and we can start a vacuum. And while the vacuum is running, I will replace that 10-inch duct with a 12-inch, like we talked about in the last video. All right, the new compressor's in. The new dryer is in. There's the old one. Coil is ready to go back in and start vacuum. I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do about bolting it down, but I mean, without the bolts, but really it, it ain't going nowhere. The other one wasn't bolted. It might vibrate a little bit, but nothing I can do about that. You know, this man ain't got no money. I told him to put a new package unit that all this was a waste of money, but he disagreed. So I'm working with what I have to work with. All right, so we'll get that going. Change the duct, new capacitor down there. And uh, that should be it. All right, guys, I got my coil back in place, all welded up, I have a system in a vacuum down to 1057. Let it pull down a little longer and uh, start putting things back together and replace that duct. Well, he wasted his money, just like I told him. There's my new duct and everything. I wasn't paying attention to the vacuum. I noticed the vacuum wouldn't pull. So I put some pressure on it. Y'all hear that? That coil is leaking. Oh, 
call him and give him the good news. And if it doesn't get worse, I went to check his heater again. Look at this. The X13 has shit the bed. Look, listen. The module went bad. It barely spins. And that's got red and uh, green jumped out. Okay, I just unjumped it. Oh, she ramp up. That's after I took the jumper off, and there she goes. She'll stop. Yep. She's gone. I told this guy to buy a package unit, but he didn't want to listen. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, it doesn't really get much worse for a customer than that. Now, Although I told this guy several, several times, buy a package unit, take the money that you were willing to pay for what I just did on video and put it towards a new package unit. Well, he didn't want to listen. Now, you know, when I went into this, I explained to him that, you know, I, I quoted him a new compressor with a new dryer and a new capacitor and that's the and to, you know, charge it up with Freon. And that's exactly what he got. Well, he didn't get the Freon part because I couldn't do it. So I quoted him out on a new coil, and of course he couldn't afford it. And, uh, I mean, he's upset, but, you know, we had an agreement that, you know, there might be something else wrong. So, you know, it is what it is. And um, so what I want to say is is that uh, there's a lot of homeowners that watch my channel. So homeowners, when you, you got a situation like that and you uh, – when you're – when your HVAC professional tells you to that it's not worth it, it's not worth repairing, just replace it, you need to listen to them. Now, I've told a lot of people the complete opposite. Hey, it, you don't have to replace it. It's worth fixing. But on this one, it had a used compressor. The fan blade had been changed. Um, I could see that the heat strip had been messed with. You know, this unit was not worth repairing. It, and it was just, it was, it wasn't taken care of. It needed to be replaced. And I explained that to him several times. Actually, almost kind of begged him not to go forward with this repair. He still had to pay me for what I did. And now he's stuck still with no air and no more money to put into it. I mean, I hate to walk away from a unit, you know, collect money like that and walk away from a unit that's not working. But I mean, I have to pay for that compressor. I got to pay the supplier for that compressor. You know, I got to pay you know myself for my time and everything else that I used. It, it, you know, I mean, I want to help the guy out, but I mean, I got to make a living too. So I think from now on, what I'm going to do is on jobs like that. You know, I took that job because I'm starting out new in a new city, but I don't think I'm going to take jobs like that anymore because it's just not worth it. You know, I mean, it's not my fault that the call was busted and the X13 fan motor went out. You know, but I tried to warn him, but he didn't want to listen. So, homeowners, when you hire an HVAC guy, you know, if, you, if, if you've been using him and you trust him and he tells you it's not worth fixing, just replace it. You need to listen to him. But then also, if they tell you, hey, yeah, this thing is worth fixing, let's fix it, then go that route too. But I never said that with this unit. When I saw that used compressor and the jacked up heat kit, from the previous video that y'all saw and uh, the fan blades been replaced. And I told the guy, I was like, dude, we don't know what we're going to run into even after we get, get this done. And y'all seen what we ran into. So it just, uh, it is what it is guys. This was one of the, I'm sure, you know, there's a bunch of you guys that have ran into the same thing, but I just wanted to put that out there that, uh, you know, Listen to your HVAC professional. If they tell you to go a certain route, go with it because 
Nine times out of ten, we've ran into the situation and we've seen it before. And I tried to tell this guy, we're probably going to run into more trouble. I didn't trust that unit from the start, but, you know, he wanted to take the chance. And that's what he got. And he's seeing what he can come up with to get a new condenser coil. Or maybe he's even asked me to try to patch that one, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but he, right now, you know, I mean, he's got heat. Well, no, I mean, he doesn't with the X13 fan motor. He can't, he can't even afford a blower motor. So they, uh, they have heat and cool windy units, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, guys, thank you all, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you all on the next one.